developments after that time were enormous, but never again has there been such a overnight change for a TV station since the introduction of TV up until the time when we changed to colour. Master control and operational areas were upgraded, including computer floor and moving the telecine chains downstairs. Outside Broadcast Van 2, another small but significant addition to the TBW production armoury. We purchased an IHC AB120 van to give us a effective one camera van. This gave us the second venue coverage of the Commonwealth Games with microwave link of the picture back to the studios. For the purpose, a RCA camera and Alan Gibbs were borrowed or hired from RCA in Sydney. With the addition later of a TR5 record-only videotape, we had a complete one-camera van with link and videotape facilities. Like OB1, and with its trailer-mounted 25kW diesel generator, it served a long and productive life carrying out many on-site commercial productions, particularly in car yards, covering the Rottnest and Wright program where the van was transported by Army Duck to Rottnest. For this program we hired the Timaria for the crew and talent. On return, many were seasick, and finally a king wave tipped us so far that those on the flying bridge grabbed the windscreen which came off. Trevor Kitchener at the helm and Lindsay Smith went overboard and both were injured probably by the prop. Next in line was Pam Bogue and myself. I managed to hold on with my right hand and hold on to Pam with my left, so we were left on board. The captain who was in the engine room stopped the boat and came to the helm, assessing the situation in the approaching darkness. He executed a 180 degree turn to retrace our path. Luck was on our side and the boys were sighted and hauled aboard. Audrey Barnaby became the nurse and calming angel, bandaging the boys and calming the group. Colin Gorey and I had our hands full while the captain headed for Fremantle. On docking, the boys were ambulanced to Fremantle Hospital. No one on board volunteered to continue with the boat to Barrack Street as originally planned, so taxis were organised. Carnarvon Tracking Station was the site for the reception of the first live TV satellite program from England, and OB2 was taken there with the TR5 recorder. This van was driven to Carnarvon by me for this historic event. Doubts about the actual go time left me with less than the spare time I would have liked. On the Greenwich Flats, I was behind a car for some time before putting on the afterburner and passing it. In response, the patrol officer put on his police hat and passed me, and having pulled me up, he said, I didn't mind you passing me at 80 miles an hour, but when I saw you were towing a trailer, I thought it would pull you up. Some weeks later, I appeared at the Geraldton Court and received a fine of two pounds, with costs of two pounds awarded against me. Thankfully, the program was received and recorded and used successfully. Studio One fit out, another step. The commissioning of this project saw the empty shell and control space fitted out as the main studio for Channel 7. I'd seen few control rooms in Australia and the US and London, mostly elaborate and expensive, many with larger space to work with. My initial proposal to use a linear row of monitors and control desks with the production staff all seated with their backs to the studio viewing glass wall. This allowed relatively clear view of the studio with a half turn of a swivel chair. This was accepted and I think I've only seen it used in the UK at the BBC. 
but it seemed to work well. Equipment was straightforward with the change to four and a half inch Pi cameras, improved lighting control, better VMU and AMU consoles, and the major step was the design and local manufacture of the motorised lighting hoists. The 6RXWB MDBY radio network was acquired by TVW and I was working on the building expansion for the group Colour Film Labs to move the studio and the provision of new studio and support facilities to move the 6RX operation from the city to Channel 7. The building layout would develop in conjunction with Hobbswinning and Leighton to suit my layout of the two studios and master control area for 6IX. I also developed the equipment requirements, including console layouts, which we were handed to Philips and had them quote for the manufacture and supply of those desks. A significant contract was entered into with Mount Newman Mining to cover the mine opening and replay and recording in Europe Japan and America on the same day because of the prior OB commitments. In Perth, a Bayes transport van was fitted out with studio cameras as a temporary OB van. The TR3 videotape recorder and the TR5 recorder were necessary to make the recordings and the copies needed for transport to Perth and to Adelaide. Details are in the documentation on the screen. My involvement consisted of driving the van in convoy to Mount Newman. Lunch at Mount Magnet was a welcome break until we discovered that over lunch the starter motor had been stolen from the hired Detroit generator. Once in Newman I was scrounging for a replacement in the mine store. Eventually one was located and I asked, how much? The reply was, it's consumable stock, don't worry about it. Next step was to set up and turn on the equipment disaster. The TR3 videotape player and I think Jeff Mortlock traced the problem to the tuned power supply designed to operate on 50 cycles power where we only were using the hired 60 cycle generator to produce this program in American NTSC standard. Replacement parts were flowing in and I returned to the mine store to borrow a small generator 50 cycle to run the videotape machines. After some time a generator was located and loaded onto a giant Kenworth semi for transport up the hill. Yes, a 125 kilowatt Volvo generator when 5 kilowatts would have done. Things were back on track when our hired generator sprung a leak from the radiator hose. Consulting our trusty stores men who could not immediately repair the hose but provided us with men and water trucks to transport water up the hill and continually pour water into the radiator as it leaked out. Day and night service was required to keep to our timetable. The timetable was so critical it was not good enough to drive the tapes to the airstrip and a helicopter was hired to move the tapes from the van door to the hired biz jet with engines running on the airstrip, saving 13 km drive. An aside is that the helicopter was hired for transport of the tape from the van to the biz jet had to be hired for a minimum number of hours. And the pilot said to me, you're paying for the time, come and have a look at what's going on. The view of the mine and the rugged red range and then being dropped onto the backbone of the range to see a dingo and a kangaroo close to me on the range was quite an uh, experience. The pictures and graphics show some of what it was like and the article explained what the event was about. OB3. The idea of improving the OB facilities had been around for a while generally looking for an upgrade of the VMU and AMU facilities with extra camera space and with onboard storage space and some of the facilities we'd seen in custom vans. Firstly, the price of custom van seemed astronomical and they also often relied on support vehicles and more staff than we could afford. Next, we concluded that more space and better manoeuvrability would be available by using a semi-trailer. Using the prime mover for driver and passenger, even doubling for a commentary booth, left additional space in the main body. Using the roof as a camera and lighting platform, and having the underbelly space for the cameras and cable storage appealed. 
Extra length inside allowed for the onboard 75 kilowatt generator with more storage for link dishes and tripods as well as for the addition of a videotape quarter at a later date. I don't remember the sequence of events that followed but I outlined a layout selected the linear layout like Studio One, leaving a tight access space to the rear of the racks and reasonable access to the operators from the passageway without interfering with the production by having the front and rear doors. Later this van was upgraded to colour, then painted red, and later the Network 7 white before being retired a few years ago. Other involvements were many, large and small, including productions like Disney on Parade, the NASA projects including visiting astronauts, New Shea tracking station controlling the Mercury projects, the tracking station at Carnarvon and the Man on the Moon project, the Lion Park venture, an initial investigation of uh, Whiteman Park as a possible venture for TVW and the setting up of the TVW Museum and the building, the flying roof that we uh, constructed for that. I've always wanted to be on black and white television. <laughs> As a lot of you know, and those who don't, I'll tell you I'm English, I couldn't help it. Surrounded by enemies, the Scots, the Irish, the Welsh, <laughs> and now the common market. Recording of the UK comedian Peter Maxwell dressed in a new suit and playing the piano in the surf was remembered because Ken Kemp had the suit dry cleaned and found it fitted me perfectly and I wore it for many years after that. The annual inspection of on-air facilities and equipment performance by George Whitfield from the Australian Broadcasting and Control Board involved much preparation and then testing with George to document the performance in all areas. This was a huge influence in equipment maintenance and purchasing, particularly when we were looking for new transmitters and microwave links. Were we to pay a premium price for, say, Siemens and Roden Schwartz or TRT equipment to maybe guarantee that performance would be achieved, or select much cheaper, much less complex and sometimes untested units such as the Ikigami, which may or may not be borderline in meeting ABCB specs? Fortunately, I never had to make that decision. In 1972, I was seconded to Academy Entertainment to build the Channel 7 Edgeley Entertainment Centre. But that's another story for another day. Thank you for your attention, and I'm sorry that much of what I've said is an engineering in-story. I hope there was just enough general comment to keep your attention.